One and a half years ago, I recorded a video called Regatta OS, I Gave Up. It is about how I installed this system twice onto this laptop and couldn't play games. People have said that Regatta has been improved over the years. Let's install Regatta again and see if they fix all the issues I encountered last time. To download the ISO file, I went on DuckDuckGo and searched for the OS name. The first result is called regattaos.com. But after I clicked this link, my web browser said it is not a safe website. And I clicked the proceed link for you guys. It goes nowhere. The actual official website is called GetRegatta and it has .br in the end of the URL. During the last time I recorded a Regatta OS video, I wasn't able to download the NVIDIA ISO file properly even though it is a separate ISO. But this time I had no issue downloading this version. I already booted up using Ventui on my laptop. It's time to start the installation. I have connected to the Wi-Fi and started the installation program. Let's walk through the process. Last time during the installation, I wasn't able to replace the whole disk using the live ISO file. I had to boot into another Linux live session on my Ventui to format the whole disk. Let's give it another try. The installation has started. There was no complaining about the disk partition. Let's wait for it to finish and see if there's any more error. The installation has finished. Let's reboot the system. Last time there are several freezes during the reboot. Let's see if it happens now. Nice, there's no issue so far. It's time to do the initial setup for the system. There is a section called users during the initial setup and Regatta OS ticked the box for auto login as a default. Last time, if I disable auto login during this process, the reboot will freeze. I'm gonna uncheck the box again and see if they fix the issue. Nice, the system boot up. It seems they also fixed that tiny issue. Let me log into the system and check the NVIDIA driver. The NVIDIA X setting is working and the version number is 545. And NVIDIA SMI command is also working. It's time to do the first time system update. I saw the software update icon in the system tray. Let me do that. Last time when I was recording the Regatta OS video, I had another complaint about show more details button didn't show a lot of details. This time, I can see what is being downloaded in the update window, which is definitely a good improvement. I can also see the system has the video encoder inside. Another small issue is that the system time is not correct, even though I connected to the internet during the system installation. Let me try to correct that. After enable the option to set the date and time automatically in the system settings, everything looks correct. With the first time system update out of the way and another reboot without freezing, it's time to check Bluetooth. With my previous experience, the most recent three gaming distributions I tried out, two of them don't have the Bluetooth working out of the box. So let's try to connect my Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. The Bluetooth works seamlessly. 
I can connect both devices without any issue. Another issue I found last time is that after you install GIMP from software store and open it up, the system freeze. Let's give it another try. Hmm, this time the software store wouldn't even install GIMP and it still doesn't specify what error it is. It just says that the error has been notified to the developer team. Well, let's try the games. I can see the Steam has already been installed by the system. Let me set up Assassin's Creed. Last time, the final straw that broke the camel's back was that I couldn't play Assassin's Creed because I can't install Uplay using Proton Tricks. So this time, I'm gonna do a fresh install of Assassin's Creed again and try to install Uplay after that instead of using the backup installation from this external SSD. After two hours of downloading this game, Uplay now found error has shown up. Consider it's after midnight now. I'll continue the recording tomorrow. Okay, I'm back. Let's try to solve the Uplay now find issue today. The first thing I noticed is that Regatta OS has something called Game Access, which contains Ubisoft Connect. But I doubt that route will work because Steam Games will try to use its own wine prefix to search for Ubisoft. So an isolated installation of Ubisoft Connect wouldn't work. The fast way to solve this is to use Proton Tricks. And because Regatta OS also advertises itself to have all the applications people need inside their software store, I'll see if I can use that to install Proton Tricks. Proton Tricks is not available inside a software store. Let me try Flatpak. I see some issues when setting up FlatHub using command line. And I also see software updates popped up. I'm not sure if the previous update I did two days ago was finished successfully or not because I see 300 packages needs to be updated. And I'm also not sure if this is the reason that GIMP was not able to install two days ago. So let me do another system update, reboot and come back. After the system update, I can install GIMP from software store now. But Proton Tricks is still nowhere to be found here. And after checking the Flatpak list inside terminal, I can see GIMP was installed as a flat pack. Let me turn it on and see if it crashed the system like last time. Okay, it doesn't crash the system. Let me install Proton Tricks using command line. Okay, with Proton Tricks, I set up Ubisoft Connect. It showed up after I start the game again. I'm no longer stuck at this step like last time. Let me see if the game starts properly. It's time to set up Mango Hut. In the terminal, I can see Mango Hut command is already available. So let me just use it inside Steam and see if it works. The game started properly with the Mango Hut command. And I can see it has additional tinkering from Regatta OS team because it shows the current GPU name which is being used by the game. Now it's time to do benchmarks. Even with the tinkered version of Mango Hut, the overlay still shows incorrect numbers after the recording. In the CSV files, the number seems correct. I got 12.70.1% low, 36.11% low, and 65.9 average. Now it's time for Red Dead Redemption 2 in Bottles. Bottles is showing up on their software store homepage, so I'm gonna install this version. 
I can see bottles is also installed as a flat pack. And because I want to use my installation on the external SSD, I have to use flat seal to give bottles the file access permission. And I'm happy to see flat seal is available inside the software store. Let me install it. I launch bottles with command line. And after I put mongo hot command inside bottles, it says mongo hot command not fine. Let me switch mongo hot from native to flat pack. Removing Mango HUD also removes a media driver extra and Regatta OS mess up packages. So I'm not sure if the game still works after installing the Flatpak version Mango HUD. Let's try it out. Like other distributions, if I'm using Proton GE as the runner, I have to switch to VLAN Plasma to be able to run the game. Otherwise, the game won't start. It's time for benchmarking. In RDR2, I'm seeing 29 as the 0.1% low, 36.7 as the 1% low, and 52.6 as the average. Let's compare data now. Interestingly, Regatta OS has the worst number on Assassin's Creed Origins. Initially, I thought there were some mistakes I made during the first time recording, so I rerun the benchmarks. All the numbers have improved the second time. But still, with the improved numbers, it is still behind other distributions which use RPM Package Manager. But with Red Dead Redemption 2, Regatta OS produced the best numbers overall. Finally, a gaming distribution is beating the vanilla distribution in this category. So the conclusion is, Regatta OS has become a very solid gaming distribution compared to the last time I tried it out. It fixed all the issues I was facing last time. Even though I had to set up Proton Tricks using command line instead of software store, and I had to switch Mango Hot version from native to flat pack to be able to use it on bottles, I don't see any major issues to use it as a daily driver as a Linux gamer. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.